Welcome to Custom Read. Let's start with story. I'm being pressured to raise my ex's child from an affair. What should I do? I'm a 30-year-old man who is still grappling with a painful situation involving my ex-girlfriend Jane, who is 27. Jane and I had been in a relationship for five years, and our bond was deeply rooted in our childhood friendship. I never imagined she would betray me in such a way. Around a year ago, I received an unexpected message from a woman named Sam through social media. Normally, I wouldn't respond to messages from strangers, but something about Sam's message made me take notice. She claimed that Jane was cheating on me, I asked Sam to provide proof, and what she sent me was shocking. Sam sent explicit screenshots of text messages between Jane and a man named Kevin. These messages included sexually explicit content and detailed conversations that were deeply upsetting. The most devastating part was a text message from Jane revealing that she was pregnant. At that time, Jane and I had been discussing having a baby, and although we had been intimate, we always used protection. Sam also sent me a video of Kevin drunkenly confessing to having unprotected sex with Jane. Sam had managed to access Kevin's phone while he was out and unlocked, and she wanted me to be aware of the situation so I wouldn't be misled into thinking the baby might be mine. I thanked her for the information and saved all the screenshots and the video. Jane was visiting her mother when I discovered this, so I took the opportunity to pack up Jane's belongings and other important items from our home. When Jane returned, she was thrilled and excited to share her pregnancy news with me. She looked so happy and jittery. I had to put on a fake smile and suggested we go out to celebrate. She agreed, unaware of what I had planned. I drove her to her mother's house instead. She was puzzled by why we were there, and I told her that she could stop pretending and that I knew about the affair. Jane's reaction was one of sheer panic. She looked like a deer caught in headlights. She initially tried to deny everything until I showed her all the evidence I had received from Sam. Jane broke down in tears and admitted that the affair was real. She confessed that she had been seeing Kevin for the past two years behind my back. I asked her whether she and Kevin had used protection during their encounters, and she admitted that they had not. I told Jane that our relationship was over and that she should never contact me again. Jane's reaction was heart-wrenching. She began crying uncontrollably and begged for another chance. She even went so far as to say that she would consider having an abortion if it meant staying with me. Her desperation was unsettling and unexpected. I told her that whatever decision she made wouldn't undo the damage she had done to both of us. I had to involve her mother in the situation. I showed her all the evidence and explained everything that had happened. Her mother apologized for her daughter's actions, and after a tense few minutes, Jane finally got out of my car. The emotional toll on me was immense. I struggled to eat and sleep properly for months after the breakup. The pain and distress were overwhelming and continued for a long time. Nearly a year later, I was trying to recover and move on when Jane reached out to me, wanting to get back together. I told her firmly that I wasn't interested and blocked her. A few days ago, Jane appeared at my front door, looking disheveled and distraught. I saw her through the doorbell camera and noticed how upset she was. She begged me to speak with her. I didn't let her in but asked what she wanted. Jane explained that Kevin had ghosted her after the baby was born and that she was now left alone. Her parents had kicked her out after she gave birth and she was struggling. Jane said that cheating on me was her biggest mistake and that she didn't like being a single mother. She asked if I would be willing to take care of her child as if it were my own. I was furious and told her to leave. I emphasized that the child was a result of her infidelity and that every ounce of love and respect I had for her had died the moment I discovered her betrayal. Jane left my doorstep in tears, and now her friends are attacking me on social media. They are calling me a terrible person, saying I should step up and help Jane and her child, despite her mistakes. They argue that I owe it to her because she was there for me in the past. I feel conflicted. Despite my anger and hurt, I feel some sympathy for Jane's current situation. But I can't bring myself to forgive her for what she did. What should I do? Relevant comments and old piece response to them. Stella Stella Maris, you are 30 years old. Surely you know how to block Jane's friends from your socials or can reply to them. I am not interested in raising Jane and Kevin's child. It's not okay for you to talk to me like this. OP, I have, but the problem is that they keep sending me messages through different numbers as well. I'm planning to change my number and move by the end of the month to be close to my parents. Fallon or Soren. She wouldn't be trying to get back with you if Kevin hadn't disappeared. You're her last resort backup plan, and she's only pushing you to take her back 
because she's exhausted every other resource and she's terrified of trying to do everything by herself. She doesn't love you. She doesn't give a shit about you. If she did then she wouldn't have been fucking another guy for two years while she was dating you. Maybe her friends can step up and help her instead of blasting you on social media and saying you're not a real man for, refusing to take her back and bust your ass helping her raise a kid she had with another dude who was fucking her for two years during your relationship, despite the fact that she only needs you because he ghosted her and she's desperate. Man, block all of them, block her, and move on. She's not your problem. They're not your friends. Fuck all of them. I'll be want a good side. Info, do you know for sure you're not his father? Have you tested him? OP, during Jane's pleading I asked if the baby was Kevin's child. She admitted that Kevin was indeed the father when they did the paternity test right before Kevin ghosted Jane. Update three weeks, and one day later. Hello everyone. Ops, brother here. I wanted to give you guys the update about Jane. Sorry it took long, a lot of things had happened during these last two weeks. I wanted to address something that a lot of you had pointed out about my brother's Reddit post. Regarding the birthday party, yeah, my brother is a bit of a forgetful idiot. He told me to edit that part of his post after I reminded him that he mentioned something about that in a dream he told me about one time. So, yeah, it's on him. On to the update. Jane had found my brother's Reddit post and it flipped out. Prior to this, she tried to leave the affair baby at my brother's doorstep when my brother was on his way to work. My brother had opened the door one morning and saw Jane walking away from the door with the kid fast asleep on the floor. My brother was furious. From what my brother told me, he threatened to call the police if Jane didn't pick up her son. Jane pleaded with him to take in her fair baby, but my brother didn't. So, she left in tears. Following a couple of days later, I got a call that my brother was in the hospital. Jane had found my brother's Reddit post and lost her crap. My brother told me that he was on his way home from McDonald's when Jane had run him over. My brother didn't have time to react before he got hit, it just happened in a flash. My brother remembered Jane yelling at him for posting the whole incident on Reddit, yes, she somehow found out about the post. My brother told me that before he passed out that the pain was unbearable. We are currently in the process of taking legal action against Jane. My brother survived, but he ended up with two broken legs. My mother was hysterical when she saw my brother in the hospital bed. From what I heard regarding my family members that visited my brother a couple of days ago, Jane was arrested after she tried to attack one of the pedestrians that tried to restrain her when they saw Jane attacking my brother after she ran him over. Around a week ago, Jane's father contacted us and apologized profusely for what she did to my brother. And so fucking pissed at Jane for what she did to my brother. Maybe I should have stayed with my brother when he told us about Jane trying to leave the affair baby at my brother's doorstep. I'm so angry, I don't even know what to feel right now. My brother is my idol. I can't bear the fact that he got injured from this woman who couldn't keep her legs closed. I'm sorry everyone, it's really hard seeing my brother in so much pain. Comment. Jajin Stancy Ans. Lol how long did it take you to make up this story? Are you a bit bored with life? Deleted. It's a real story, in the affair baby. Ask me anything. Hair or smash. Yeah I'm sure this guy's brother saw his sibling in the hospital and thought to himself boy, Reddit really needs to hear about this development. Story 2. How false cheating accusations led to one of the most tragic outcomes in my life. I, 31M, and my wife, 29F, had a baby last December. It should have been one of the happiest moments of our lives, but the birth turned out to be incredibly traumatic for my wife, which led to her developing postpartum depression. It was heartbreaking to watch her struggle, and as we navigated through those tough early months, we made the difficult decision for her to stay home full-time instead of returning to work after her maternity leave. We agreed to reassess the situation when our daughter turns one. To help her cope, my wife started attending therapy sessions weekly, and we hoped this would lead to better days ahead. With my wife at home, I found myself working longer hours to ensure we could provide for our family. This was something we had discussed before she made the decision to stay home, and she understood the sacrifices it would entail. A few weeks ago, my boss approached me with an exciting project that came with a hefty workload, and required a lot of overtime in a short time frame. It was a golden opportunity, not just for our finances, but also for my career advancement. After some careful consideration, I talked it over with my wife. To my relief, she agreed that I should take on the project, knowing it would be a big help for our family. During this time, my mother-in-law and her close friend, Jessie, would come by to help out with our daughter and manage household responsibilities. 
Jessie, who is a stay-at-home mom with two young kids, began coming over during the day to assist my wife. Initially, everything seemed to be working well. My wife appreciated the help, and I felt relieved knowing that she had support while I was at work. However, about three weeks into the project, it became evident that we would need additional time to get everything in order. I came home that night and talked to my wife about the situation. While she said she was okay with the delay, I could sense that something was off. Over the next few days her demeanor grew colder, but given the emotional roller coaster we had been on for months, I tried not to take it too personally. As the final week of the project approached, I came home one evening to find Jessie still at our house. At first I didn't think much of it. I greeted them both and went to check on our daughter. Just as I was about to enter her room, I overheard Jesse say something that sent a chill down my spine. He doesn't even stop to greet you, definitely a sign. I stopped in my tracks, feeling a wave of confusion wash over me. I turned around and asked what she meant by that comment. That's when everything spiraled out of control. My wife immediately burst into tears, and Jesse launched into accusations, claiming I must be having an affair. She suggested that I resented my wife for her postpartum depression and that I was no longer attracted to her because she had gained weight after the pregnancy. Those accusations hit me hard, I have been working tirelessly to support my wife through her struggles, and I truly believe she is beautiful just the way she is. Yes, intimacy had taken a backseat, but that was a part of our journey during this challenging time. Jessie then demanded to see my phone, insisting that my refusal was a clear sign of guilt. I stood my ground and told her no. In response, she insisted that this refusal proved I was hiding something. Trying to keep the situation calm, I turned to my wife and offered to let her look at my phone if she wanted. She nodded, and in that moment, I felt something inside me shatter. The realization that my wife could actually believe I was cheating shattered my heart. I felt betrayed that she was so easily swayed by Jessie's words. When my wife looked through my phone and found no evidence of infidelity, Jessie quickly shifted her accusations, claiming I must have deleted everything. The confrontation escalated, she started screaming, and her outburst woke our daughter. Frustrated and feeling cornered, I had to ask Jessie to leave our home. Once she was gone, I focused on calming our daughter while my wife remained on the couch sobbing. After I got our daughter back to sleep, I sat beside my wife, desperately wanting to talk about what had just happened. She opened up about how she had been feeling uneasy ever since I started working all the overtime. I reminded her that we had discussed the opportunity, and that she had supported my decision to take on the project as she expressed that the extended timeline felt suspicious, and I explained that sometimes delays are simply a part of business. To reassure her, I showed her messages, emails and pay stubs with timestamps confirming my hours. After a while she apologized for doubting me, admitting that Jessie's comments had influenced her thoughts. I asked her why she trusted Jessie more than me and why she hadn't come to me with her concerns first. Unfortunately, she didn't have a solid answer. Now, several weeks later, the project has concluded, and I've made a concerted effort to scale back my hours to spend more quality time with my wife and daughter. Yet, I feel utterly burnt out from carrying so much responsibility. The bitterness I feel is hard to shake, as I constantly wonder whether my wife truly trusts me. What happens the next time I have to work late, run errands, or go on a business trip? Will I return home to more accusations of infidelity? I've tried to broach this topic with my wife a few times, but she insists that it's not the right time and often expresses that she feels tired or sad. I want to be sensitive to her feelings, but I can't help but wonder if it means I have to bottle up my own emotions indefinitely. I feel lost and unsure about how to move forward from here. If anyone has any advice on how to navigate this situation, I would be incredibly grateful. Comments Parat this is a shitty situation made worse by you wife's friend who is possibly projecting her own relationship issues on you guys. I would go to couples counseling and keep reassuring your wife that you love her. Depression makes you think crazy things, I hope the best for you. Deleted, Jessie probably projected her own problems into your relationship. You have to tell your wife that she should trust you. Maybe some therapy, her best friend damaged a lot of something that wasn't her freaking problem. She is the devil on your wife's shoulder. Fascination Street, wow, Jesse should be crossed off the friend list immediately. Your wife is extremely unstable right now. The last thing she needs is someone putting lies into her head. Is there a way for the two of you to attend a couple of the therapy sessions together to get all of this discussed? It honestly doesn't seem like the one X slash week session is sufficient for how bad her mental health may be. Is she on medication? 
you can't walk on eggshells and you can't put your job at risk by refusing work trips etc. Update 4 days later. Thank you to everyone for all of the advice and support on my previous post. I think a lot of you pointed out what should have been obvious, that I need to get a therapist and start looking after my own mental health. A couple people asked for an update, so I'm giving one, but it's not happy. At night I approached my wife and told her that I was going to find a therapist. I didn't connect it to her accusations or anything, just said that I was having a tough time and needed therapy. She shrugged and told me to do whatever. Next day, I got home from work and our room and my home office were ripped apart. Things everywhere. Important papers scattered. I don't see her but our daughter's in her room crying. My wife left her alone, her cell phone's off. I call my in-laws and a few friends, but no one's seen her. I'm starting to get worried and I call my mom to see if she can babysit while I go out and look for her. Before my mom can get home, my wife gets back, Jessie's driving. Jessie doesn't come in, she hasn't been back in the house since I kicked her out because she was offended by my behavior, but my wife does. She's clearly upset, been crying. I ask what happened. I thought at first the house might have been robbed. She starts screaming at me that I'm being unfaithful and that the therapy is a front so I can meet my mistress. I try to calm her down and tell her that's not true, but she came at me and she hit me. My nose is broken. She kind of realized what she did and sat down on the couch and went comatose, just stared at the wall. I went into my daughter's room and locked the door. Called my mom to tell her what happened, she was already on her way, and my MIL to ask her to come over and take care of my wife. I packed a bag for my daughter and when my mom got there, we'd left. My wife didn't even look up. We dropped my daughter off with my dad and then went to urgent care for my nose. I got blood all over my mom's new Subaru. My daughter and I are staying with my parents for a while and my wife staying with hers. I'm looking into getting a restraining order against Jesse. My wife and I are separating. I love her, but I won't live with someone who hurts me and who could potentially hurt our daughter. I'm not going forward with a divorce yet, with the hopes that my wife will get the treatment she needs and we can work things out. My in-laws told me that they're looking at inpatient treatment at a local hospital. But I also have everything well documented, in case of an eventual custody battle. My heart's broken because I know this isn't my wife, this is a sickness in her mind. But I need to keep myself and our daughter safe and give her the space to recover. I'm hoping that this is the right decision. Thanks again everyone. Edit, thank you all for your feedback. I've talked to my parents after reading your comments and came to the conclusion that for my daughter's protection, I need to file a police report. I am headed to the station now. Relevant comments. Miss Mamba F. But Jesse, I'm not saying she's the cause of all this. But she definitely was the catalyst. That she enjoyed the circus show she helped produce. Rari 6672. Wow. From reading this in your previous post, it sounds like Jesse deliberately got in your wife's ear in order to ruin your marriage. More than likely her life is a shambles and she wanted your wife's to be in a shambles. For her to be with your wife and not have the baby is pathological. Good for you for having your child with you and for working to get Jesse out of your life. She will not be happy until your marriage has been completely destroyed along with your wife. Jesse is pathological. She most definitely isn't a friend. She did what she was accusing you of. She didn't care about your wife at all and caused this break. You are right to get yourself into counseling. You have a long road ahead of you. Keeping you and your daughter safe are your main concern. I am sorry this happened. Jessie took advantage of your wife's vulnerability and planted her evil thoughts in your wife's head. Wow, there are no words for what she did other than evil and psychotic. Final update four more days after last update now deleted. Do I let the woman I fault with my wife's death let her speak at her funeral? TLDR, a woman fed lies to my wife, suffering from postpartum depression that led to a mental breakdown and her death. She now wants to speak at my wife's funeral. Denying her would start trouble, which I'm not sure would be worth it. There's more context for this situation in my post history. My wife passed on early Monday morning. Convinced by her friend Jesse that I was having an affair that I did not have, she had a mental break which resulted in my taking our infant daughter and staying with my parents for a while. She was with her parents, who planned on taking her to the hospital for inpatient treatment on Monday. On Sunday night she came to my parents' house and demanded I give her our daughter. Because she had left her alone for several hours the last time she was responsible for her and had gotten physical with me I refused. 
I offered to let her come in and spend time with her while my parents and I were present, but she didn't want to come in and wanted to take our daughter with her. She was upset, but left eventually. A few hours later she drove her parents' car into a tree and died. The friend Jessie came to see my daughter and me yesterday. After some tears she told me that she was planning to speak at my wife's funeral. She had already cleared it with my in-laws, but was letting me know as a courtesy. I told her she would not be speaking at the funeral. We fought and she left after telling me that I was an asshole and not the only person who loved my wife. I talked to my in-laws who are adamant that Jessie be allowed to speak. She and my wife knew each other since they were kids and my in-laws are close to her. We're all very fragile right now and I fear that pushing this further would hurt my relationship with my in-laws which I don't want. Still, the thought of seeing Jessie up there at my wife's funeral makes me feel sick. I don't think I can stand to listen to her, knowing that she took joy in my wife's deteriorating mental health and picked up my wife, leaving my daughter home alone. That being said, I don't trust myself to make the best decisions right now. My mind's clouded by grief, guilt, and fear. My parents are split on what to do and I don't have the energy to reach out to my friends. So I'm coming here again to ask for your advice. Thank you. Relevant comments. Kirpiliskesha. Do they know what went down? Oopis reply, they do to an extent. They know she accused me of an affair and was with my wife while our daughter was alone. I don't think they understand the extent it went on. They said that they don't really want to hear anything about it since they've already lost their daughter and don't want to lose Jesse too. Nikki 72. Dear in-laws know what she had said to her. Cause sitting down and having a conversation with them with the logical choice. If they knew that this woman had a hand in causing your wife's death, I sincerely doubt they would want her even at the funeral, let alone speak at it. As matter of fact, make sure as many people as possible know what she said and caused. She preyed on her friend at her most vulnerable time. I'm not even sure how she can look in the mirror knowing she was behind this.